But today's video is going to be something different. <laughs> Why am I like this? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Angela Odomo. And if you are old here, my name is still Angela Odomo. But today's video is going to be something different. It's going to be about the digital SAT because as an international student, I just wrote the August 2023 digital SAT. And I'm here to share my experiences with you, what I learned, how I learned it, the resources I used, and how I prepared in just two months to get an almost 1,500. So, what is this almost 1,500 that you've been talking about? You don't tell us your real score? Well, I got a 1,470. A 1,470. I got a 1,470 in the new digital SAT, which was I expecting it? Was I not expecting it? At the beginning, before I started any preparations, I was like, I'm going to get a 1,550. But I got a 1,470, and after a lot of preparation, I actually saw how not so easy it was to get it. Number one, because of the unavailability of digital SAT materials. Number two, because I was writing as a Nigerian student. I was writing WAEK, my Nigerian students out there, WAEK and NECO throughout this year. So that spanned from about April 2023 to August 11th. And then the digital SAT that I registered for was August 26th. Bad decision, right? I know. So I started reading for the digital SAT two months before my SAT, that's June. So towards middle June, that's when I actually knew I was writing the SAT and when I knew it was going to be digital. So during my NECO, I decided to read for SAT and NECO simultaneously, which I did. And I don't suggest you do that. Don't be like me. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't think you can like me. But I did that. And then I had my last paper on August 11th. And from August 11th to August 25th, that was exactly two weeks I had to really prepare for the digital SAT. I put my all into it. So immediately I was on Mineco. I just went into it straight. I was practicing, of course, every day. I was practicing before August 11th. I practiced every day. But for the last two weeks leading up to my digital SAT, that was when I really, really practiced. The purpose of this video, I know you're scared. I really was scared. And if you're not scared, like thumbs up to you a really big thumbs up to you but i was scared and i am what they call smart but i was actually scared because it's just so new and there were only four practice tests i was like what am i supposed to do with this and like me i decided to do three practice tests in the span of about three weeks because i was so anxious like hey let me prepare for it let me prepare, prepare for it but don't be like me, please. Please, I beg you, don't be like me. But let's get into the video. Disclaimer. I actually did not have an SAT tutor. For those who may want to say that in the comments, I did not have an SAT tutor during the course of my study. It was wholly self-study, no in-person external help, none at all. So if I can do it, and I made so many mistakes, you can do it too because I'm here to tell you the mistakes not to make. Number one, the books I used. Okay, so the books I used. The books I used, I used Kaplan 2023 SAT prep. Not the digital one because it's not available in my country yet. I'm from Nigeria. It's not available here. So I used it one month into my study. I used that. And I finished 98% of that book. 100% of mathematics. But then in English, about 90 something percent because I just realized that it wasn't helping and i really wasn't getting any better at the english because i feel like the, the most difference between the old sat and the new sat because i've practiced for both is the english if you were good at the former sat math you will be good at the digital sat math i got a 790 in mathematics and a 680 yeah i think a 680 in english so the math i had already practiced for my math using the old SAT material, so it was like completely good for the new SAT, but for the English, it just wasn't the same. They were so particular about things that are considered so insignificant here, like punctuation, like our teachers never actually taught us punctuation. They taught us, but... <laughs> Next to the online resources, the online resources, resources, I would say, were the most important to me. I would say that that was actually what helped me the most, the online resources. 
I used a lot of online resources. I just kept researching and finding new ones every day. And every time I found a new one, I was super excited. Because as I've already told you, I ran out of official college board practices. What are the online resources you used, Angie? Of course, no gatekeeping, no gatekeeping. I used the college board practice test. Of course, I did that. Number two thing I would say I used, I used the Preply Digital SAT app. I'm not, this is not a paid advertisement or anything. It's just something I found along the way. And I was like, okay, this can help. So I would rate it a seven, seven and a half over 10. Why? Because it's actually helpful. It helped me in my English a lot. It helped me to just have like, it's one-on-one -on -one questions. So after one question, you could see the answer during the practices and stuff like that. So it was actually helpful, but you have to pay for it. It's paid. I paid, I paid about 7,500 Naira a month. I will just convert that to dollar or over here to dollars that's what i paid and i paid for it for just one month because i started using it one month into my study journey so i just needed needed to subscribe for only a month and then i ended my subscription so i gave it a seven and a half the remaining three and a half, two and a half points went to the fact that i felt like there were many inconsistencies in it i felt like some answers were not correct but who am i it's just my opinion and then you could do like these quizzes so after you've practiced some modules kind of you could do these quizzes so i'll take the english quiz but in those quizzes you never got to see the correct answer after you were done so that's where the two and a half went to some other things that were top of my list were private youtube channels like preaching p john jong and yeah that was basically there were some other youtube videos i saw here and there that were like okay we got this but then for actual practice these two they did a lot for me and then active recall active recall in the sense that like instead of watching instagram reels or something passing away my time i would watch youtube reels these guys made a lot of youtube shorts on digital sat videos so i was like so engrossed in that i would just click on the youtube short and then i would pause it before they could answer the question i mean if i got it right i'd feel happy and if i got it wrong i would be like okay let's go to the next one i'm not going to get the next one wrong so that was like my form of active recall the third online site i used was the khan academy i didn't use this khan academy i didn't use the khan academy early on i used the khan academy when i was two weeks before that's august 11th that was when i actually started using the khan academy app that was all i used for online resources and websites minus youtube youtube was the most important thing to me at some point for preparing for the digital sat because it was just so helpful i discovered some channels which i will link in the description below of course so the first channel that i found out so helpful to me was score yes that's the name of the channel s c o r e score i use score a lot he actually created his own digital sat prep material from ai also. AI generated digital SAT prep material that are supposed to be similar to the originals. Even though they weren't that similar, it was just an avenue for me to release my stress and just keep practicing. I just wanted to keep practicing. So I practiced that there were a lot. And then for the English, I tried to do everything because as I said, I wasn't, I knew I wasn't really good at the SAT English. So I tried to keep on doing it. But another problem with these were the answers once again i felt like some of them were not correct but actually some of them were not correct after research i found out that some of them when some of the answers were not correct some of them had repeated answers but then i give the score an eight and a half out of ten it really boosted my confidence and thumbs up to him he's really doing it and it's completely free practice tests for free hundreds of practice tests for free thumbs up to you the next youtube channel i used was a youtube channel strategic test prep this strategic test prep this youtube channel is run by actually i don't know the owner or an ambassador of preply so that was where i learned about the preply app but she was super super helpful it seemed like she had done extensive research on the digital sat now it's time for some personal advice some one-to-one -one. my top 
tier personal advice to you for the digital math SAT. Anyone struggling with that would be the Desmos calculator. My practice scores drastically changed when I discovered the Desmos graphing calculator. At first, I was being misindependent and I was doing the math sections all by myself without using the Desmos calculator because I was like, yeah, I could do this, I could do this. But then it's not about you being able to do it. It's about you being able to do it in time. So before I started using the Desmos calculator, I did it myself. I'm this was when i actually started using the desmos calculator that was my first call and i was shocked i was like i will never stop using this and i didn't stop using it so instead i went to youtube and actually watched like a 30 minute video on all the functions of the desmos ca graphing calculator you could solve linear equations simultaneous equations like like that without wasting any time and for the digital sat um math module 2 you need all the time you could get module one is it okay module one is much easier than module two and how well you do on module one actually de um, defines the questions you get for your module two so if your module two is super hard that means you're on the right track one thing i was struggling with was that the time was beating me i wasn't beating the time for the math modules so i made it a point of importance to beat the clock and during my practice i actually did on the last one i practiced for the first time i beat the clock the clock didn't beat me and i got i think a 770 on that one yes i think i got like about a 770 but i just wanted to get to that 800 because it was just a reach away a step away and that's when i started using the youtube shorts john jong and preaching p i was using them a lot yeah that was what I did for the math section. And actually, on the day, I did not run out of time on the math module 2. Instead, baby girl ran out of time on the English module 2. Congratulations to me, I guess, because I spent so much time focusing on my weakness that I had developed another one without even knowing. And that probably won't happen to you, but just be sure. If you have a weakness, generalize it over everything. Because I, I had a weakness of time, but I only I limited it to math. I was like, okay, I am losing time on the math. On the math, I'm losing time on the math. I have to work on not losing time on the math. And eventually on the day, I didn't lose time on the math. A 790, I got a 790, I didn't lose time. I had even, I think I had some seconds to spare, which for the math module 2 was like great for me. Then on the English module 2, I lost time. I had about five questions remaining that i hadn't answered in the last two minutes so i just a b c d pick me pick me that's what i did i'm pretty sure that didn't work out hence my score my pick me pick me i'm pretty sure i didn't work out hence my english module score but it's fine it's completely okay i'm here i've done it i've made mistakes so you wouldn't so any weakness you have make sure you generalize it if you feel tense during the math make sure you generalize it to stop feeling tense during the math and the english if you can't comprehend the english questions very well make sure you generalize it to not being able to comprehend the math and the english even though you may be able to comprehend the the math but just generalize it just do an over overall comprehension like okay today i'm going to focus on comprehension math questions and english questions today i'm going to focus on tension with math and english today i'm going to focus on time management math and english so generalize all your problems don't just limit it to the module that you've been having tough times on recently three would be space your tests please don't be like me please don't be like me space your test nobody told me at the beginning i just wanted to be do it all done and then i did it all and at the end of the day i was stuck i even had to repeat practice tests i repeated practice tests one two and three because I run out of practice tests. But if you repeat them, they don't actually give you an accurate representation of what your score may be. Because whether you like it or not, your brain saves some of them. So this question, your brain is like, oh, I've seen it before. I remember the answer. And the real day, it's not going to be like that. Because there won't be anything like, I remember the answer. And please, please, and please space out your practice test. Prepare at least three months in advance if you can. But if you can't, it's completely fine. So many circumstances that people are in. 
not everyone is following the american system of education we all have different times so try your best maximize your time even if you have a month to study do it if you have a month to study do it you probably if you can't push your test do it another one would be the practice test environment whenever you're doing a practice test from the official college board try to simulate the what you think the environment would be like on that day okay let me describe to you what it should be like you'd have a table not too large not too small so don't space out all your all your rough sheets so much you'd, have, you'd be giving your own work your own papers but then if you are just if you are taking it out of the u.s just bring yours in case i brought mine in case i brought four a4 sheets a4 sheets empty bring your pen bring your pencil i even brought my own internet box my own router because somebody told me to so my friend that had written the sat told me to because the center that he wrote in the internet coverage couldn't take everyone actually did bring my own router that day and of course i looked like i knew it all because who brings their own router to an exam but better safe than sorry i used it but there wasn't actually a need but then just i'm not telling don't bring your own router i don't think that would be the case but then just try to get everything ready another point would be if you run out of time which is the very last option very last don't run out of time pick c or d because if you've noticed the last question especially in the modules module tools are the hardest so the sat would rather you read the long question and then start going through the options one by one and then put the correct answer towards the end or at the very end so you don't see it in time and then you run out of time but what you should do if you run out of time please don't pick c or d just pick c or d which is i did that i think i did that just pick c or d don't don't let this be at the forefront of your brain let it be behind behind your brain in your cerebrum don't 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 run out of time but if you do c or d is what i learned this from um the youtube channel strategic test prep so you should do it so pick c or d. and my last advice for now my final advice would be fake it till you make it nobody was born ready even if you aren't ready right now, you could be ready in a week. You could be ready in two weeks. Just never give up. I was about to give up a week before my SAT. I wanted to postpone it to the October SAT because I didn't feel ready. As a matter of fact, I started looking for tutors online, but the prices were just too much. That last week, I, I was nervous. I was so, so nervous. And I just wanted to postpone it because I didn't think I was ready. My practice test scores then were 130 something. That was my range, 130 something, and I didn't want to get a 130 something. I wanted to prove to people who said I couldn't do it, I couldn't write all those exams at once. I wanted to prove to them that I could. So I was really thinking about postponing it, but thank God I didn't. Thank God that idea didn't leave my head. So fake it till you make it. You won't make it. So why not just fake it? Keep practicing. Practice like you're going to know it because you are going to know it. So I know you were scared. You shouldn't be scared anymore because it's just a one to one. You really shouldn't be scared it's all going to be great and remember your sad scores are not you and that doesn't mean that you're going to fail that piece of advice doesn't mean that your sad scores are going to be bad but even if they're great even if you get a 1600 or 1600 your sad scores are not you be you do you read study a lot practice practice is the watchword of the day just keep practicing every material you could get your hands on practice so as the youtuber say subscribe like and leave a comment on if you think i should make another video or if you think i should be more specific in some parts anything like that just let me know in the comments i want to see what you guys are going through because i've gone through it just a little less than a month ago i was here so just tell me i will reply tell me your stresses let me tell you what i did let me tell you what i did to get over it tell me i want to talk to you i want to speak to you okay thank you for listening to me thank you so much I wish you the very best of luck and I hope you really try. I hope you really practice and I hope you have confidence in yourself because confidence is key. Don't go in there without confidence. So thank you guys for listening to my YouTube video. I hope you're educated because I'm re-educated. Brings back all the memories. And I wish you the very best of luck. You're going to do great. You're going to do awesome. I just know it. 1,500 pluses for everyone.